Merry Christmas, TPC. I mean, just stand and let's sing joy to the world. <laughs> seated. God bless you and welcome and thank you for being in the house of God today. I've got some announcements and I don't know where they went. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. We're, we're so excited for you to be in the house of God this morning. Uh, I want to give you a few announcements and then we're going to, uh, we have one to baptize today. Come on now. What better gift to give in Christmas than that of a clean heart and a fresh start? I uh, want to talk to you about Pastor's Honor Roll. If, you are, uh, if your kids are going to be on the Honor Roll this year, we want to honor them. And so if you, if you have kids that you know are going to be on the Honor Roll, please uh, let my wife know that information, and we can plan accordingly. We want to have a special time uh, for them uh, in a special Honor Roll thing that we do here at TPC. Also, I um, want to remind you that our, Chris, our New Year's Eve, we are going to be having church, so New Year's Eve, it's next Sunday, or New, no, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, thank you. See, this is why she sits on the front row, so there's this autocorrect feature that's always happening. It's uh, very so New Year New Year's Day. We will plan on being here uh, for church, and so we, we would love to have you join us. How about that? All right, I'll get my ducks in a row here. I um, hope everybody's surviving the cold. Yeah. Hope all your water is still flowing, and all those good things. Uh, I've been praying about that this week. We have our special offering designation that we we have been talking about, which is Christmas for Christ, and so I'm gonna. Uh, as our ushers are getting ready to come, I just want to remind you about what Christmas for Christ is all about. We call it Christmas for Christ because it goes towards what we call North American missions. The mission of North America is to reach the gospel into all four corners of our North American continent. How many know North America needs Jesus? Amen. Amen. It needs Jesus in a big way. And so we want to... Uh, open up an opportunity for new ministries to go into different communities and different locations throughout North America. And that's what this offering does. It, you may not be able to go, but you can go by giving. And so that's what this morning's offering is all about. So let's ask the Lord's blessing over our Christmas for Christ offering on this Christmas day and ask the Lord's blessing and favor to open up opportunities throughout North America for the gospel to be preached. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what it is that you have done. Lord, that all of us here today have had an opportunity to receive, Lord, the gospel preached to us. And Lord, we are asking, Lord, that your spirit would do the work, Lord, that needs to be done all throughout North America. And Lord, as we give this offering today, I ask, Lord, your blessing to be upon it. Lord, that you would multiply it and use it for your glory. 
for your name's sake, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning as you give. So this morning, you got a great opportunity to give a great gift to somebody. We don't have that opportunity, but the Lord does. And I'm glad that the Lord knows where we are. He knows what it is that we need, and he takes care of us. But the thing is, is we've got to do our part. One of the things that I am so thankful for this morning is that John Payne has had a journey, a faith journey, that has led him from California all across this country to finally land in Moberly, Missouri. And what's about to happen in John's life is significant in so many ways. And so I'm going to ask John Payne to come at this time for baptism. If you'll come on up, John. And I'm going to ask his family if they would like to join us. Beth has been... Beth has been down south taking care of family and all kinds of things, and John's been up here batching it for the last, 
for the last, uh, he's a huge Raiders fan, if you don't know that about John. He's, he's even sporting Raiders right now. John, let's get you in here, my friend. We're going to take an opportunity to pray over John. I'm telling you, there's so much that's about to go down in this water right now. And we want the Lord to continue the work that he's done in John's life. Because God's not finished. Just because we got water under our bridges doesn't mean that God's not finished by a long shot. I believe God has something in store for John Payne and the rest of his family. God's done some amazing things here. And so... I want you to just extend your hand in, in an act of faith of what God's going to do for John and this family. Ask the Lord to just continue to bless him with favor and providence. Lord Jesus, today we pray over John. We pray over, Lord, his future. We pray over what it is that you have set into motion. God, that you have brought him, Lord, a mighty, mighty long way. Lord, that you have broken the chains of bondage. Lord, you have set the captive free. Lord, you have done a miraculous work. You have manifested your providence and protection and provision. And, Lord, this morning we pray over John. We pray over his future. We pray over what it is that your plan is for his life. I pray, I pray God, that you would continue to work in him, Lord, as he is obeying the gospel this morning. Lord, that you would just continue to work in him and through him and for him. I pray, God, that you would continue to work through him, through the power of your spirit. We pray it this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. All right, John. Let me... John Payne, because of your obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm now baptizing you in the name of Jesus for the remission of all your sins. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood.
give God a hand clap of praise for what he's doing. That's awesome. So excited. We want to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. We want to ask the Lord to touch uh, Carmen Pruitt's niece uh, had a stroke. Her name is Tanya Kitchen. We want the Lord to touch her. We've got a lot of folks that are sick. All this junk that's been going around. Raylan Morgans is sick. The entire Murray family are all sick today. Charles Holder is sick. How many know somebody who's been sick or is sick right now? Okay. <laughs> let's just be fair about this. Uh, let's ask the Lord to help those who are, who are not feeling well this morning. Ask the Lord to just touch them. And I want, I want us to go back and have special prayer for Sister Woods this morning who's dealing with a condition in her body. Can you just lift up the needs, Lord, that I've mentioned? And if, maybe your need, whatever it is, whoever it is you know, why don't you lift their name up to the Lord right now and ask the Lord to touch them this morning. We believe in the healing power of the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for standing. Thank you for praying. We're going to continue to worship the Lord in song and celebrate. You may be seated. We're going to celebrate what it is that the Lord has done.
Flesh and blood his substance. He took the form of man, revealed the sing.
Again, Merry Christmas, and I want to say thank you to Jamie. I know she's been dealing with some stuff, and she pushed through to make that happen this morning. I appreciate that. If you have your Bibles, I promise you I will not be very long. Uh, some of you may feel me when I say I am the only thing standing between you and a nap. <laughs> and I am right there with you. It's good to have Pastor Chris Black and his family with us all the way from Florida. What an exchange of atmosphere. <laughs> so I'm sure you're enjoying this polar vortex that we got going on here in mid-Missouri. If you have your Bibles, you can stand with me. I'm going to read for you some scripture. A little reading this morning, but that's okay to read the Bible in the house of God. What a novel concept. Matthew chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 18, and it says this, Now the birth of Jesus was on th this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, marry thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken 
of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him, unto him his wife, and knew her not until she was brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of, the, of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king uh, had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Jesus should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. Duh, everybody knows that. <laughs> For thus it was written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not thou, uh, art not thou least among the princes of Ju Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor who shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently that what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Then they, when they had heard, the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. In verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes here about following the star. You may be seated. As far back as mankind's beginning, there is evidence that the stars in the heavens were used as guides to lead mankind to his known and, in fact, even his unknown destinations. And so it's not surprising to discover that the wise men which journeyed to Bethlehem in search of the newborn king followed a brightly illuminated star that led them to the Christ child. It was light that led them during that season to the true light of the world. The true light of God was shown to us through the face of Jesus Christ. Can anybody say thank you, Jesus? The, the Christ of Christmas has come to give victory in every aspect of our lives. It doesn't matter what darkness you are facing. The light of Jesus can pierce any darkness and bring victory where there was certain defeat. It can shine upon your impossibility and bring hope to the hopelessness that you may be facing in your own life this morning. Why dwell in the darkness of sin whenever we can walk in the light of the Christ of Christmas? Second Peter 1 and 19 reminds me we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto we do well to take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. What Second Peter 1 and 19 is referring to is to the day star, Jesus Christ. And for some of you, you have seen the star and he has touched your life and he has impacted you and he has changed you and he has made you whole. Can anybody say amen if that's happened in your life? Matthew chapter 2 verse 9 tells me the story of the three wise men. And it tells me that whenever they heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it stood over the place where the young child Jesus was. You have to understand there's a lot of different opinions concerning what the wise men saw some have said that the star was a meteorite, a fallen chunk of space debris that was crossing the atmosphere, which was, and, and you know, that, that's, one, that's one take on that, and I understand that. Some believe that the star was a comet, a flaming uh, pile of ice and frozen gases that were melting as they crossed through the atmosphere of Earth. 
as they as it approached the sun. Others say that it that what the wise men saw was actually the explosive death of a giant star or a supernova. Regardless of whether it was a planet, whether it was a meteorite, a comet, or a star, as the scripture says, whatever it was, it was specifically ordered by God for this time, for this moment, so that men can find Jesus. Can I tell you this morning that we are living in a dark culture that's growing darker by the moment, but we have a light to guide us. It's called the Holy Ghost. That is the star. It is the thing that guides us so that one day we're going we're gonna to be able to see him. The fact is that it was ordered by God, and it led men to the King of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so on this Christmas morning, can I remind somebody that God designs and orders special moments in every one of our lives, that if we are wise, we will recognize that there's something unusual about this moment, and those special moments will lead us to him. But we must first see the star. We must first see the light. And it, we need to allow it to lead us to him. Because the reality is, is that no man comes to the Lord without the Spirit first giving him the invitation. The star may appear, but whether you want to follow that star or not, that's completely up to you. For many of us here in this room today, we have testimonies of the star that has revealed itself multiple times on multiple occasions, but we never followed after it. But the moment that we begin to follow after it, we sense that there was something, that, that, that light of revelation, and I'm talking about the Word of God, the Spirit of God. It was leading us to a place where we could discover something, and that place that it led us to was a discovery of Jesus Christ himself. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The old saying is still true today. Wise men still seek and worship God. If you really want to find Jesus, if you're really diligently seeking after him, it's impossible for you not to find him. Because God is everywhere. Jeremiah 29 and 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The wise men in the east came seeking after Jesus. For they had seen his star. And whenever they found him, the Bible says they fell down and they worshipped him. There's nothing like the joy that comes whenever you discover Jesus Christ. There's something about it whenever you come into contact with his presence and you see him for who he really is. There's a joy that comes over you. There's a satisfaction that follows that experience. I don't know how long they sought after him, but I do know that whenever they found him, it was worth every effort that they had made to make it to that place. Everything that they had done to make it to where Jesus was, it was worth it all. You'll never be disappointed whenever you find Jesus. Because when we see Jesus, it'll be worth whatever it is that you had to give up. Whatever you had to go through to endure. Because when you encounter Jesus, your life, can I get an amen, is never going to be the same. It's never going to be the same. I'm here to tell somebody that you can find him today on this Christmas morning. You can be delivered today on Christmas morning. You can be redeemed this morning. You can be forgiven. You can be made whole. Whatever it is you need from God with him, all things are truly possible. The day star is shining in this place today. And your search for truth is over, my friend. Your search doesn't for peace doesn't need to go any further than what you are this morning because in this place is Jesus Christ. Where you are this morning is a place where we teach and preach Jesus. And that, my friend, is the ultimate source of peace and truth in this world. Because Jesus is the answer to everything that you need on this Christmas morning. Matthew 2 and 11, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men gave gifts unto the Lord. They offered to him the very best of what they had. And whether you know this or not, giving is a part of worship. Giving is a part of worship. What we offer to God should always be done in a spirit of worship. You may be thinking, I don't have any gold, Pastor. I don't have any spices of frankincense or myrrh. 
Well, neither do I. And it's a good thing that we don't need that stuff anymore because all you really have to give to God that is of any value to Him is your life. Your life is what matters to God, and God wants it. God desires what it is that you have to give this morning. You know, Herod had some ideas about this Jesus character. In fact, whenever these three guys showed up in town, he's like, hey, what are you doing here? Well, we just wanted to come and ask you first, Herod, about where this Jesus is because he's a big deal. Herod thought he was the biggest deal. And so Herod began to just kind of, hey, well, where do you think that he might be? And so it's in Bethlehem. Well, this is something that I need to know a little bit more about. Why don't you go and find him? And once you find him, come back and tell me about it so that I can go and worship him as well. We all know what Herod's intent was. Herod's intent was to go snuff out his competition. But there was something about these men who had gone through some things and they had traveled a distance to meet this thing, this thing born of Mary, this this child called Jesus Christ. And so whenever they finally made it to Jesus, the Bible says that they fell down and worshiped him and offered gifts. You need to understand that whenever you catch a glimpse of the day star, when you encounter Jesus, you won't go home the same way that you came. That's what happened with the wise men. They came from Herod and they found Jesus. And when they encountered Jesus, they did not go back the same way that they came. The Bible says they left a different way. They knew what Herod's intent was and they had no intention of going back and telling him about Jesus. But when they encountered Jesus, they left differently than where they, from when it was that they came. You need to understand this morning that whenever you encounter Jesus, you don't go home the same way that you came. You'll go home free from bondage. You'll go home encouraged. You'll come home. You'll go home strengthened. You'll go home enlightened and delivered from whatever it is that you may have walked in with. The truth is, is if we will repent, you'll go home forgiven. If you'll get baptized in his name, John Payne, you'll go home cleansed of all the things in your past. If you'll seek the Christ of Christmas, his presence will go with you and you'll go home filled with his glory. Don't let the enemy steal the Christ of Christmas out of your life today. Don't let him destroy your faith and cause you to completely lose out with God. But be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. Be sensitive to the leading of his spirit. For the day star is leading us into the presence of God. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this. Follow the star. Follow the leading. Follow the light. Follow what it is that you know of God. Follow the light of God's revelation in your life. Follow the word of God. Be faithful to what you know is real. And let the Lord lead you this morning. I'm going to ask my musicians if they would come at this time. The Bible tells me that wise men traverse the deserts and the wilderness of all kinds in order to get to Jesus. They came from the east. We don't know exactly how far east. We assume that they were from Ur of the Chaldees because the Chaldeans were, they were gifted in science and astrology. And so these guys were clearly looking at the skies for some kind of sign. But even then, that was quite a distance that they would have to travel to make it to Jerusalem and then eventually Bethlehem. It was the star that was their guiding light that eventually got them to a place where they could actually see the face of Jesus Christ. And if anything, the Christmas story today should remind us that we have been given a hope beyond all hopes in this world. And that if we will follow his star, if we'll follow the light that he has provided for us, we're going to make it through this wilderness that we call life. And one day we will see him face to face. Someday we're going to see Jesus face to face. The wise men traveled from the east to where Jesus was. And they saw his face. Because of the star, they saw his face. And for you and I this morning, what the story of Christmas really represents is that Jesus came and gave us hope. And if we'll follow the word of God, we'll follow the leading of his spirit. We'll follow the light, the revelation, the star that's been given to us. That one day... 
we're not going to come from the east, but we're going to be tra traveling the, the other direction because he's going to show up. The Bible says the eastern skies will part. And you and I are going to be heading east. And we're going to see him face to face one of these days. So let's faithfully follow so that one day we can see if we'll be faithful and follow then one day we're going to see Jesus. How many excited to see Jesus? How many excited about what the story of Christmas really represents? A hope of glory that's come down to us. Let's commit to do our part. We're going to sing a song, and I want you to stand with me as we sing it. It's called, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Let's sing it together. Before we dismiss in prayer, for those who would like to stay after service, maybe you don't have some place to go, maybe you don't have a family event to go to, we want to encourage you and invite you to stay here. We've got, uh, got some treats and different things, and we would just like to hang out and just fellowship with you. You're more invited to stay, and we invite you to do that. Let us pray as we dismiss. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity that we have here today, Lord, to come and to gather together and to honor you, Lord, and what it is that you have done. Lord, what this day represents to each and every one of us, Lord, that salvation has come to the world of man. And, Lord, today we are recognizing, Lord, your, your coming. Lord, that you came that 2,000 years ago. You came, but, Lord, you're coming again. And, Lord, that we need to do our part. And, Lord, we need to be recognizing that we need the light to guide us. We've got to have, Lord, a light in a dark place. Lord, we've got to have the light of the word of God illuminating each and every step that we take. Lord, let us hide your word in our heart, Lord, that we may not sin against you. And, Lord, let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. 
I pray, Lord, over each and every one of our, our membership here today, Lord, that you would just begin to bless them and cause your favor to shine upon them. Lord, let your spirit abide with us as we go from this place. Keep your hedge of protection and that perfect peace upon us. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother John Payne, I have a certificate of baptism for you, sir, so don't leave without that. God bless you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. God bless you.